Welcome back to Real Fishing 2 The Walkthrough. Today we are heading to the high seas for some trolling in search of the blue marlin. Fishing from a fast moving boat can be exhilarating and exciting. You listen to your captain and we are of course on the lookout for a blue marlin. Specifically we're looking for a blue marlin over 10 feet, although there are five species we can catch here. We've got uh, the marlin and the sailfish are the two billfish. Then you've got uh, Dorado male and female and the skipjack tuna as uh, smaller fish. Now this was played out over two fishing sessions because as you saw there, I unloaded the middleweight trolling rod, the middleweight trolling setup. That only allows you to use baits for the Dorado and the Skipjack Tuna. So the trolling session, you kind of have, it's almost like an auto scroller, I guess you could call it. You don't have to do any casting. You don't have to do any um, maneuvering a bait around. Your bait is just out there uh, already in the water with the, with the boat moving around. You can see we have some jumpers in this uh, trolling session. And when fish jump, they put a great strain on your line. So if you are reeling or pulling, or if your line already has some tension on it, even if you are not reeling or pulling, if your line has some tension on it, when they jump, they can snap it pretty easily. So you can see my drag is set to loose and I'm watching the animation of the fish pretty carefully. And when they turn themselves up towards the surface, as soon as I see that, I let go of everything to see if I can get tension off the line before they get themselves to the surface to jump. Now, when I turn them, as you just saw with this Dorado, uh, it's a little bit different story. You do have to keep reeling because you have to get them up to the surface in order to land them. So this is the Dorado female. By the way, um, this fish goes by a few different names. Um, some people call it Mahi Mahi, especially when you're uh, ordering it to, to eat at the uh, sushi restaurant or at the seafood place, you get the Mahi Mahi. Uh, Dorado is a name that I've seen it in a couple of different fishing games from Japan. And then uh, some English uh, speaking anglers call them dolphin or dolphin fish. So you may know them by a few different names. I'm not sure why they have uh, male and female. It's two different species in this game, but there's actually other fish that uh, have two different varieties for male and female. Uh, I think wrasse is one of them, and pale chub is another in this game. Pale chub, male and female, wrasse, male and female. So this is another Dorado. I, I, on this first day, I'm trying to just check off my list. On the second day, that's when you unlock the heavy gear. But uh, right now, the gear only lets you use these smaller uh, lures that are specifically for the smaller fish, the Dorado and the Skipjack Tuna. So there's probably a hidden counter that I don't know about. I don't know exactly where it is, but there's probably a hidden counter of how many fish you need to catch or how many fish of varieties you need to catch before it will unlock uh, the, the heavy weight trolling setup. But either way, this first day, we've got the light set up. We're going to try to check off uh, three different species while we're here. And again, I'm trying to let tension be pretty light on my line. Because he jumped there kind of without warning. And he was at the end of the line when the tension is at the strongest. There was some kind of billfish. I think it was a sailfish we saw in the background there. Uh, and we do land this fish. So it is going to be a male Dorado. So this is actually a new species for our fish Pokedex. So we have uh, both varieties of Dorado. Now all we need is the Skipjack Tuna. You can see I'm checking my notebook here. No Blue Marlin. I do have both Dorados right there. I'm double checking that that was a male. Uh, the difference is the, the shape of the head and the color of the fins. So you've got the males have kind of a big flat head on the front of their body. Um, you can see also the sailfish and the skipjack tuna are the other species that we're waiting on. Let's see what we have next. Got a different color, color lure here, and this is, as you can tell by the body shape, this is our skipjack tuna. And that's me loosening the, the tension of the drag as quickly as I can. Should have done that before I even hooked the fish. This is me just double checking while that fish was charging down towards the bottom. Checking to make sure that we indeed had the uh, the tension as loose as we could make it. Because uh, the skipjacks had been uh, prone, like the Dorados, to, to jump and snap the line or uh, pull down when you have a short line, pull down toward the bottom and snap the line. There's a uh, another Dorado in the background. And there we go. I got this guy turned and he's landed. So this is another fish species checked off the list. 
That's three of the five that we're looking to catch here. And tuna is all set. So the interesting thing about trolling here is you can only do it in two different months. It's only available once in December and then again, I think in June or July. So there's only one month you could do it in the winter and one month in the summer. So I'm trying to maximize what I can do here. You saw we just uh, had to stop fishing. And now I've got the heavyweight and I move my, there's no other choice for reels, but I move my lineup not to 130 the maximum. I moved it to 100 in an attempt to get a few more bites. Um, and so now I can use larger octopus baits. So I can use the ones that are set for the marlin and sailfish. So now I'm ready to start pulling in some of the big boys, although you still can get bites from the smaller fish when you are using these bigger baits. So the Dorado and the skipjacks can come. This is the uh, our buddy, the sailfish. And I'm doing the same thing where I'm keeping the drag as loose as I can keep the drag and trying to get this fish in with as little tension as I can on the line when he starts to turn towards the surface there. So this is not our blue marlin. This is our sailfish that we're pulling in. So this one is not incidental to uh, advancing the level, but it is another fish to put in the Pokedex. So there we go. That is four of the five species still waiting on that blue marlin. Um, I noticed that if you use a 130 pound line, the, you know, the highest strength line you can, your time between bites can be pretty long. Uh, so the it looks like that mechanic does work. I've talked before about how a lot of fishing games have hidden mechanics that just don't do anything, but they say they do something, and it looks like maybe they do, as you're just being anecdotal about it. There's a little tail walk from this sailfish. But this one does seem like it does work. So when the line is a stronger strength, you your bite rate will be lower. And when I needed to advance this level here quickly in a small number of sessions, there's a lost sailfish. I wanted to maximize my bite rate in order to at least get some blue marlin in while I was here in December uh, to avoid having to advance the month all the way to the summertime to come back to this level. I'd like to use my time in this game as conservatively as possible. I try not to just jump forward on the calendar if I can avoid it. You can do that, but you can't back up on the calendar, of course. This is a blue marlin. So this is the target species. The size we're looking for is 10 feet, 10 feet. And I'm noticing that these fish in this level, the biggest risk normally is them jumping and snapping your line. The kicking animation, you're seeing it a little bit more from this blue marlin than you have with the Dorado, the Skipjack, or the Sailfish. Uh, but a lot of the fish in this level don't do that kick animation very much. So you don't have to worry a lot about losing fish like in some of the smaller fish species in the creeks where you're always having them uh, force their way off the hook with that kick animation this one you're a little bit more worried about them snapping your line off so our blue marlin here giving uh, quite a fight and we're taking it easy we're going slow i'm trying not to build up tension on the line because a big run or a big uh, kick would uh, could really ruin our day so this is species number five it is seven and a quarter feet, not the one that we're looking for, but it does check off that species, 469 pounds. Of course, much bigger than the uh, Amago trout and the Ayu that we've been catching so far in this game. Let's jump ahead. So this was done over two different sessions and I would say overall trolling is a pretty straightforward level. A lot of, uh, of what's going on in trolling, you don't have to do much casting. You don't have a whole lot of choices for bait or techniques. This is a blue marlin again. The uh, You can't use the sound as far as I've been able to see, the sound or the vibration, to tell uh, tiers of fish size. I believe once you get over the, the two-foot size, uh, you're just at this particular sound. On the smaller fish, you can tell the difference between a less than one foot one to two feet and then a two foot plus fish but i think we're just now in the two foot plus fish so every one of these fish that i've hooked on this level has been big enough to have that same sound so i don't have a lot to go on in terms of knowing whether or not this fish is the uh the size i need 
as has been the case in some of the levels where I'm catching the, the smaller trout and I keep losing the, the one that I know is going to advance my level or the red sea bream. <laughs> I keep losing the one that I know is going to advance me. Here I have no idea until I land the fish. And I'm playing this one just like you saw the last Blue Marlin played. Pretty uh, conservatively being really, really relaxed, letting the fish run. They're not uh, trying to kick the hook. I should mention that these billfish, the marlin and the sailfish, are extremely fast biters. You need to hook them immediately. They will take the bait and run with it a little bit, but you need to hook them as soon as it's in their mouth. I wanted to mention that before we finish up. And that is the 10-foot blue marlin. And I will say this is a bit of inside baseball here. This was actually the first blue marlin that I landed on day two. I've edited this video so that some fish that I caught after this marlin, I... <laughs> I showed those first, but that blue marlin was the first one that I caught, and it was about three minutes into the session on the second day. So I've cut to uh, just some footage of the level while I wrap up here because I caught some other fish after that. So the 10-foot blue marlin did spawn before any other blue marlin actually bit, bit my lure. Uh, but I will notice you can go back and watch the hooking of those billfish. You have to hook them immediately when that lure is in their mouth. If you wait until they're running with it in their mouth, it'll be too late and they'll slip off. So you have to be really ready to go right there. Well, that's it for trolling. We are heading on further and further towards GT fishing, which we'll talk about on the saltwater side of this game next time. Uh, we're already getting our way up towards the legendary Sela Camp, and I'm looking forward to unlocking that and showing you what that looks like and discovering what it looks like for myself. If you like this series of videos, I always love it to hear those comments. Leave them down below, or you can hit me up on Twitter, where I'm also active, underscore A-T-E. We will see you next time.